All right, good morning and greetings from South Georgia, USA. We are out here on the front porch of the barn. We call it the CNC barn because we have a CNC machine in there and we also have different woodworking tools. And we are declaring the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, to anybody that will listen. Anywhere in the world that's listening, on September the 3rd, 2024, we have a little change up in the weather now. We are having completely overcast sky this morning and we've actually had a few drops of rain already and it is welcome. We haven't had rain for a while and I have planted some collard seed in, in the ground about probably seven days ago. And it has not come up yet, so I'm thinking that it will. We have adjusted the phone camera again to a middle resolution, and we're checking out how it will look. So if it looks grainy or if anybody notices anything different about it, you can let me know in the comments. We are getting close to the election here in the United States. And uh, that seems to be all that the news talks about. I'm thinking that the media is controlled. I'm thinking that many lies are being told. I think that most of the stuff that we hear on the mainstream media is not true and that is used for propaganda purposes. But since we don't know what is truth and what is a lie, it's very difficult to know which way to go. But we know one truth. Jesus said he was truth. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. This is probably the most profound thing that Jesus ever said. It is all that we really need to know about him. And either we believe that or we don't believe it. But in order for us to believe it, somebody needs to tell us that he said that. And that's what I'm telling you this morning. Jesus said, I am the way. That is the way to the door to the kingdom of heaven back into the Garden of Eden, where we will walk with God, where there will be no death, no pain, and no tears. Now, the Garden of Eden is, it may have been a real place, but I think it certainly is a metaphor for a perfect existence in heaven. When mankind was put out of the garden, he was on his own. And when we become, uh, at, reach the age of accountability, then we are essentially our own God. We have rejected God. And that is as it should be. Now that, that's, that's how it, God designed it to be. We were to get on our own. 
And that happens somewhere around the age of four or five or six for most people. And they realize that they are who they are. They, at that point, somewhere along in there, they recognize themselves in a mirror. And at that point, they become their own master. And then we grow up and start learning what the meaning of life really is. We're taught that there is a God, depending on what culture we're in. We're taught about Jesus. We're taught about the sacrifice of Jesus and how Jesus died for our sins that we do while we are our own Lord. Because you see, as a flesh and blood man, we possess no goodness within our flesh. To put it bluntly, the opposite of good is evil, and we are. There is no good in the flesh and blood in itself. Now God demonstrates himself to us in many different ways. In the teachings of the Bible, in the lessons that we learn from nature, we can see, hey, there's got to be a God. Somebody had to make this stuff. Things don't make themselves. And everything that we see in the physical world goes away. And of course, our elderly relatives go away and sometimes some that are not so elderly go away. Well, Jesus came to give us, I like to think of it as a grand play a movie in a sense. He taught. He taught wisdom. He taught you how to get to the kingdom of heaven back into the blessed state that we, that's known as the Garden of Eden or you might say the kingdom of heaven. There was no death in the Garden of Eden. But then when man was cast out of that, then there was death. And like I said, we can't count on anything in the physical flesh and blood pain plane. We are evil in the sense that we're not good. But in the flesh and blood domain which we find ourselves, it is very difficult for us to realize that only God is good. But that is clearly taught in the Bible. God alone is good. And Jesus, of course, was God and divine, and he was our creator. And in a an act of love that is impossible for us to clearly understand. He desired for his creation to be with him in the heavenly domain. But being good, he could not force us to love him. You can't force somebody to love you. You could make a woman say she loves you on threat of being beaten, but you know it wouldn't be real love. Real love cannot be forced on somebody. Nobody really understands what it is, honestly. But God is love, and God is good, and God is perfect. So when he created us, he couldn't make us love him. Because that would have been forcing somebody. 
it would have been taking away the free will. Okay, so some might say, well, why did he give us free will? Why didn't he make us perfect? Well, because he wanted to give us free will. Why did he want to give us free will? Because he's good. Now, anybody in their right mind, if you ask them correctly, will tell you that they do want to have free will. The opposite of free will is that you are a puppet. In the story of Pinocchio, Pinocchio desired to be a real boy. If you're a puppet, you're not real. You are a machine that somebody else is controlling. So you see the dilemma that God was presented with, that Jesus was presented with. I'm going to make these creatures, but I want them to love me because they love me, not because I make them love me. Jesus could have made us into creatures that would say, I love you, Jesus, every day of the week, but then it wouldn't be free will. So here's the dilemma. I've got to create these creatures and I know these creatures, if I asked them, would have wanted to be a real person. That is, to make their own decisions, their own idea of who they loved and who they didn't love. I cannot make them good. Well, God could have made us good if he wanted to. Of course, he could do anything. But he didn't want to make us good because, of course, if he made us good, well, we would automatically love him and he wouldn't have free will. We wouldn't have free will. He wanted to be loved. He wanted us to love him of our own free will. It's just like with the idea of the prostitute. The prostitute sells her love. And of course, I guess a good prostitute makes a good show of it. But really, if you think about it, you realize, does this woman love me? Well, of course not, because she was loving somebody else maybe hours before, and acting the same, and maybe even saying, I love you. I don't know. I've had zero experience in that department. But not only does the prostitute not love the person buying the services, the person buying the services does not love the prostitute. They are simply using each other. And using somebody is not love. So it is with God. God does not want to make us love Him. So there is again is the dilemma. Now, the God obviously knew that if he created us and gave us free will, free will, that some of us would end up loving God and some of us would end up honestly fighting God. And apparently this is the sin of the devil. He was a created being and created very nearly the greatest creation of God. But yet, he did not love God. Who did he love? Well, he loved himself.
So Jesus, in his love, came to his creation and said, I love you. I love you. And I'm going to demonstrate my love for you. And I'm going to sacrifice myself, my human incarnation, so that those that believe and see that I am God, the Creator, and that ask me to save them, I am going to give them the key to the kingdom of heaven. And this is the great play that Jesus God put on. And the play is being shown every day throughout the world. And told by people like me and trying to explain what it means. Well, some people don't believe Jesus and some people don't, don't love Jesus. That's because we have free will. Free will means free will. Well, this is the mechanism that God created in order that He could bring some people into the kingdom of heaven. It was the only really choice he had. If I'm going to bring, create these beings and then have them come and fellowship with me, then I have to give them free will. And of course, he immediately knew that that means that some of them were not going to come to him in love. But he did it anyway. I don't know the mind of God. He did it. How do I know these things? Well, the Bible teaches these things. I didn't make this stuff up. I just read it and I give my interpretation on what it means. Jesus, I'm say, I started with saying, you can pretty much ignore what you hear in the news. You can ignore what you hear from the mainstream media. Uh, the corporations are telling lies in order to profit. They don't care if they feed you stuff that kills you. They don't care if they give you uh, vaccinations that kill you, if they can make money on it. They don't care. They're all about their own Lord. They're their own God. But Jesus comes through the barriers between the kingdom of heaven, the spiritual kingdom, and the fleshly, earthly kingdom, and presents himself as a man. And he dies for us. I think because he knew that that would resonate in the minds of a certain number of people and melt their hearts and cause them to realize that there was a greater meaning to life and then cause them to cry out to this crucified man God and say, who are you? And when you cry out to Jesus and say, who are you? What are you? He will answer you. And then you will be born again as a new creature. And then you will be with God spiritually at first in the kingdom of heaven. The spirit, uh, Jesus said it, the kingdom of heaven comes without seeing. And he's talking about being born again. 
the kingdom of heaven doesn't come down here and plant itself on earth in buildings and thrones and golden streets. It comes without seeing into the person that has received Jesus into their heart because they ask Jesus, who are you? Jesus shows him, yes, I'm God and I can give you this born again life. I'll say again, the earthly plane, the fleshly plane is full of lies and evil, including the beings that live on it, including us. The spiritual heavenly plane is full of truth. I'll tell you once again, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. I'm the way, follow me. I'm the truth. I'm telling you the truth. I am the truth. I'm the only truth. I'm the only thing that's true. There is no other truth besides me. Everything else is a lie that you're hearing. And I am the life. That is the real life. The only life that exists. We don't have life as human beings. We just have a temporary existence. We are mortal. Well, that's how it came out this morning. I never know exactly what's going to come out of my mouth, but I've been promised by God that if I asked for the Holy Spirit, He would give it to me. And if I asked for my daily bread, He would give it to me. And my daily bread is His Word. And then I can tell my interpretation on what he has told me is all about. If any of this has any meaning to you, and I know it does to some people out there, and you haven't come to Jesus yet, I urge you to do it today. If you haven't come to Jesus yet, today is a beautiful day to do that. Say these words, Jesus, will you show me and make it clear exactly who you are? If you are God, and if you can give me eternal life, please show me. And Jesus has promised, it's that simple. Now the trick is to get, somehow or another, get to the point where you We'll ask him. I don't know how that happens. It is absolutely a mystery to me how that happens. And I know that the Bible also teaches it's not anything that I do that's good that causes that to happen. I don't know how it happens. But I'm urging you to do it if these words mean anything to you. I am calling to the lost sheep. Ask Jesus who he is, and then he will, ask, he will show you, and then when you see clearly who he is, you may ask him to save you. Now, we'd like to say the Lord's Prayer and end this little discussion here. And I pray that the words that I have given are free from my own evil self and are truly the words of the Holy Spirit. Please say the Lord's Prayer with us. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come. Thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this, this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.